Okay, think it's all over. With David and Rory is one of the country's top sporting broadcasters who was on the open top bus with the winning England rugby team, which of course makes him eligible for an MBE. Mind you, the conductor got a knighthood. John Inverdale. Jonathan is Britain's leading 400 metre hurdler and reigning Commonwealth champion who was once a contestant on Gladiators. His most successful event was the one where he had to use a giant cotton wool bud to fight off Ulrika Johnson. <laughs> Rick Rawlinson. We start with a handbags question, David, Rory and John. It's the other rugby code for you. Take a look at this. Here's Witness Vikings' Julian O'Neill back in his Wigan days helping his team win the Rugby League Challenge Cup back in 2002. But the Aussie-born standoff has been in trouble throughout his career and has now incurred the wrath of a riverboat company in his native Queensland. So what has Super League's bad boy done to upset them, David's team? How can you be a bad boy in Rugby League? What do you have to do to be a bad boy in Rugby League? Club somebody to death with a whippet. They do it. <laughs> Can I just welcome John Inverdale? Yeah. Well, I oh, have a great right. yeah. Yeah. He has been described as the BBC's top anchor man, and Jonathan's been described something very similar, I believe. <laughs> I'm excited John's on the show. World's strongest man. That's a proper sports yeah, show, isn't it? Absolutely That's right. That's a sports show we all understand. I think the most amazing thing about that programme is if you look at all the guys who take part in it, they're all 24 and a half stone and 6 feet 5. Wow. And they all have wives and girlfriends who are all 5 foot tall and 6 stone. Right. Which, which, I suppose which, that's uh, because when they go on a plane they can take them as hand luggage. <laughs> Because you've got a degree in history, haven't you? I have got a degree in history, Rory. That's interesting. Because you're history, David, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you play rugby. Yes. And you play tennis I, as well. I, I attempt to, yes. I, I'm waiting for the big challenge. Oh, yeah, Jonathan plays tennis. Yeah. I piss all over you. Look at the state of you. <laughs> out of shape, John, no two ways about it. I used to like the end of the world's strongest men when they used to always end, quite hilariously, in an ad hoc way by throwing me in the pool. Yeah. These days, that's one of the challenges. <laughs> <laughs> we were briefly involved in a sports quiz before yeah. all that started. What was the question? Uh, Witness Vikings. Mr. Oh, yes. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, rugby League has 13 and Rugby Union has 15 yeah. viewers. That's <laughs> okay. And Rugby League is the national sport of Papua New Guinea. Is it really? And there's not many sports that can claim that. Well, no. Only, no, only, only one. Only one. Yeah. 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 Is it true, John? You actually were on. You were actually on the World Cup, winning the bus with the. I was on the bus. Yes. You should have taken David. He gets free after nine o'clock. <laughs> I've been waiting. Now it's quite good. A couple of years' time, he'll be driving one. <laughs> I think the bloke mm. <laughs> steering the boat, right? The captain, right? Said. We have to remind the ladies and gentlemen it's a complaint from a boat firm. <laughs> said, keep a lookout for whales. And one of the guys said, don't be stupid, they got knocked out weeks ago. Hey! Oh, well. No. no. Or... No. <laughs> no. I went swimming with dolphins during the World Cup. I reckon he jumped off the boat and tried to straddle a dolphin. <laughs> well, dolphins don't have necks. Mm. You can still straddle them. <laughs> you can still strangle. strangle. No. <laughs> He really would be the bad boy at rugby league, yeah, wouldn't he? In dolphins coming over there. Have you ever swum with a dolphin, really? I did, yeah. Did you like it? Was it a life changing experience? No. Yeah, I went with one. They said you're going to love it. I hated it. He had bad breath for start, fishy, he had dirty old teeth in it, and he didn't like me. I think they are intelligent creatures. I think Julian O'Neill made the entire team line up along the boat and pelt dolphins with beer cans. No. <laughs> you don't know, do you? In fact, and I know it sounds incredible, Julian O'Neill is alleged to have tried to set fire to a boy in a dolphin suit <laughs> while drunk on the boat trip. <laughs> the organisers of the trip have written to witness complaining about O'Neill's behaviour, although his club are standing by him and believe the claims to be exaggerated. Dolphins are, of course, the most intelligent creatures on Earth. They can communicate with each other, recognise symbols, and scientists predict that within two years, they'll be able to beat the Beckhams at Kaplunk. <laughs> Bill, Jonathan and Chris, it's an athletics handbags it's question for you. Here is Britain's finest ever hurdler, sorry Chris, Colin Jackson, storming to yet another gold medal at the most recent European Athletics Championships.
But since he retired, Jackson has been on the offensive and claims that he is undervalued in Britain. So why does the king of the high hurdles think that he's not as famous as he should be? Phil's team. We've got to welcome Chris to the show, yes. uh, popular German, uh, the finest hurdler, cool, jumping over things. You do the 400 metres, don't you? Yes. Don't you hold the record in 300 metres? Yeah, world record for 300 hurdles, yeah. Nobody but runs it, though, that's part of the reason why not. <laughs> Chris, um, yeah. you know, your, our Olympic hopes go with you. Oh, you know, we're, and, and, and no pressure. Yeah, but you, but you, you're confident. You're confident, are you? Yeah, I'm pretty confident, yeah. Because you've oh, suffered, but you've suffered with injuries in the past, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I have. You can't take chances with your injuries. Phil never took chances, did you? Never. He always guaranteed he'd be ill before a big event. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, when he knew Bangladesh was coming up, he had roller skates to the top of the stairs, a bar of soap at the bottom, <laughs> he'd be ordering his doner kebabs extra wear. He took no chances. All the way down the path, he had rakes, didn't he? Bonk, 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 bonk. Now, what was this question? Well, he's Welsh, well, isn't he? He's Welsh. He, yeah, that's he's right. He's Welsh, and yeah. he's a bit upset because he hasn't been recognised. I'm going to give you a three points, Phil. Well done. Well done. Yeah. 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 According to Colin Jackson, indeed, the reason he's not as famous as he should be is because he's Welsh. If I'd been born with blue eyes and blonde hair in Berkshire, I'd be alongside David Beckham, he said. He's absolutely right. If he was an English hurdler, he'd be every bit as famous as matey boy here. <laughs> Colin Jackson is undoubtedly the fastest thing in Wales, whereas the slowest thing in Wales is Ryan Giggs responding to an international call-up. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have no points, and Phil's team have three. Yeah. Well, well, it's a fine joke. Hard night now. We catch up with the comings and goings of England's first family now in our David Beckham challenge. A point for each question answered correctly. David's team, you're first. David Beckham was recently given another award voted for by British youngsters. What was it? Worst ponytail in football. I very much uh, doubt no. that. <laughs> the best example of the dangers of proposing when you're pissed. <laughs> Most ten peck man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think he'd get that. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> was it the sexiest man in Spain, Europe, the world, the galaxy, no, the universe? No, it's, it's, it's even more ludicrous than that. The most popular man in, in history. The most like. popular man hey. in history was voted. Jesus, incidentally, came 123rd. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. The Beckhams had recently put their house in Cheshire up for sale at one and three quarter million pounds. Which part of the property is valued at twenty five thousand pounds? Victoria's Kennel. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely not the library. <laughs> <laughs> Some of those first edition colouring books are very valuable. Yeah. <laughs> very no, no, I don't want to. Got um, I actually went to have a look at his house to buy it. But, did uh, you? Yeah. Oh. He wanted too much money. <laughs> did, oh, are you a chicken <laughs> job? <laughs> oh, you really want? Oh, we're a tenner. <laughs> He's got a very nice tree house in his garden. Brooklyn tree house is the correct answer, yeah. It's oh. a big tree house. Hmm? Oh, well, it would be. He's got to get a tree's in it. It's it got to be big, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not one house, it's three houses. <laughs> According to Victoria Beckham's dance stylist, how does David like to surprise his wife? <laughs> He creeps up behind her, puts his hands over his eyes and says, Who are you? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you the points for that. That's virtually correct. He, he turns the lights out of bedtime and sneaks up on her. David and Victoria were recently treated to £40,000 worth of freebies by designers Dolce & Gabbana. How did the two Italians describe Britain's favourite couple? Thick and thin. <laughs> They described them as two gentle pigeons, and of course that's very accurate because after all, Victoria lives on breadcrumbs and produces piles of crap. <laughs> right. Still seem here are your Beckham questions. Right. Which plastic Beckham item goes on sale next month? Do you think they have a clear out of old toys? Have they sold David stickle bricks? <laughs> no. But how about a replica Gary Neville face mask that makes Victoria wear? <laughs> They're making an airfix model of it. They are indeed. Yes, if you point to that, well done. What does David Beckham's wife think should be made compulsory at 15? Oh, no. Uh, go on. Go on. Uh, uh, Phil Tuttle, the first question he's got right by putting his hand up since he was eight years of age. <laughs> Let's see if he can do it. 
a Brazilian. He, she has indeed said that Brazilians should be compulsory from the age of 15. It's quite right. staggering. <laughs> According, well done. Did yes, she mean like a house yes, yes. or did she mean everyone should be given like a house servant? No, like no. <laughs> she, meant, she meant the, the, the topiary. <laughs> According to Beckham's mother-in-law, what does Sorry, David... what did you say? The topiary. I said. Is that something? Is that dried <laughs> flowers? No. <laughs> no that, that's potpourri! <laughs> It sounds similar. You've got to give him that. According to Beckham's mother-in-law, what does David's latest hairstyle make him look like? Peter Stringfellow. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Look at the haircut. Look over there. Look, that looks like a photograph in the worst barber shop in the world. <laughs> <laughs> You've got, it's, like, it's like, you're looking over there, it's like you're looking through a time walk to the 70s. <laughs> You've got the worst haircut. Hey, You've got your oh, mullet. Hey. You've got your ponytail. And who knows what that is. <laughs> At the beginning, I wanted to do the jokes. I did want to say we've got Jonathan, Phil, and Chris, and on the other side, Smokey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Living next door, door to Alice. Alice. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit you though. You've got like great hairstyles, yeah. Look at Nick, and then look at you. Oh, Nick, look at Nick. Look, he's distinguished these days. He yeah. looks like a sort of fatter Philip Schofield. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, then. David Beckham's uh, mother-in-law said his hairstyle made him look like, 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 like a no. handsome young man. No. Nope. A prince. No, the answer is... David Simon. No, Jesus. She says he looks like Jesus. She had a conversation with Victoria and she says, you know the only person who's had that haircut other than your David? Jesus. <laughs> what has David Beckham recently banned Victoria from doing? Shout out Alex Ferguson's name during lovemaking. <laughs> no, he stopped her from leaving sexy messages on his mobile because he thinks people will find them and put them on the internet. It's not actually the messages from Victoria that David's worried about. He just wants to leave room for all those declarations of love from Gary Neville. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Phil's team have five. Yeah. We press on with the treble. David's team, your subject is ropey advertising and your three are Battle Scarred World Cup winning captain Martin Johnson Fleet footed 400 metre heartthrob Roger Black And the greatest Muhammad Ali But which one is launching a range of Halloween masks? who advertises sticking plasters, and which of the three puts his name to dog food, David's team? No, you, you advertise stuff, don't you, David? A few bits, yeah. Well, is there anything you've turned down? Condoms. <laughs> <laughs> David Seaman advertising condoms. Oh, I remember, this. I remember this advert. It was just after the World Cup, wasn't it? It said, if David's dad had used a condom, we'd still be in the cup. <laughs> It, it can't be Roger Black doing the dog food because he never win a lot. <laughs> oh! It can't be Martin Johnson in the mask. There wouldn't be much difference, would there? That's true. Oh. Martin Johnson could advertise the dog food. You know, yeah. You're looking at me, pal. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a dog, David? Have you? I've got three dogs. Have you? Yeah. Do you train with them? Are they retrievers? <laughs> <laughs> <That's the ball. laughs> Martin Johnson advertises plasters because he's thumped enough people that they need them. <laughs> Roger Black advertises dog food. And Muhammad Ali advertises Halloween masks because. Because he's correct for three points. Three out of three. Well done, Matt. <laughs> yeah. In fact, Martin Johnson is now the new face of Elastoplast. Roger Black and his Labrador Jasper advertise Perina dog food and win a lot. And Muhammad Ali is launching a range of goods, including Halloween masks and women's underwear. <laughs> Martin Johnson is also the face of the Leicester Tourist Board and thanks to him more and more people are staying in the city. They've put posters of him on the exit routes with the slogan, where do you think you're going? <laughs> Roger Black recently said that he feared London's bid to hold the Olympics had been jeopardised by the Iraq war. Although to be fair, it hasn't done much for Baghdad's bid either. <laughs> Phil's team, your subject for the treble is Sportsman in Love, and your trio of lovebirds are Newcastle's central defender and no stranger to the courtroom, Jonathan Woodgate. Monotonous golfing machine, Tiger Woods. And liver swap legend and no stranger to the courtroom, George Best. But which one wooed his partner with the help of a game reserve? Who used Federico from Big Brother? And which of the three thought the way to win a woman was with a circle of fish fillets? 
What sort of fish were they? Could it have been salmon? <laughs> no. I love salmon. I love salmon. Go. Salmon's probably my favourite, although, for a special night out, sea bass. John, you fish eater? Well, a white bait. I'm a big white bait person. White bait? That's oh. not a proper fish. No. That's like a gay fish. It's the little tiny <laughs> <laughs> Chris, are you romantic? Do you do anything much for your... Not have you, really have you, have a romantic have you, have you, guy. Is there a lady, a special lady in your life at the moment? There isn't, no. You're available? Yeah. Are you, are you stopping to take me out on dates? No, I am not, sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were married. I, I thought I was married. No, I was married. My ex-father-in-law was a um, seaman's P teacher. Really? You're kidding. Yeah. That's incredible. So he was around. Well, he was teaching in the 1860s. Yeah. And he's still <laughs> <laughs> so f you're saying fish could have been used as a tool of seduction by one of those? Well, yeah. It may have been misguided. Let's Valentine's Day is not an easy time for me because I want to please my wife. I try to do what's right. I want to get her the flowers she wants and the chocolates. But you try asking for red roses and forever wash eight. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you make, have to make a reservation for the restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out with you. You can push a man so far. Is it Jonathan Woodgate and uh, Fred Rico? Oh, he goes out with uh, that Big idiot who there. used to host uh, Rice TV, didn't he? <laughs> Kate the, Lula. the blonde idiot. <laughs> I remember when it was George Best and the Fish, because when he had a row with Alex, he laid them out in a circle outside her house, didn't yeah, he? It wasn't Alex, but he did do that. To hey, me. remember oh, Boyle in the Bag Cod? Mm. That was good, wasn't it? Oh, and then you got this <laughs> I used to like it with uh, Smash, mashed potatoes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Horrible. What do you mean horrible? Smash is horrible. What's wrong with Smash? It's disgusting. Well, how is it disgusting, it's potatoes? No, no, let me get... Not, it's Rory, it's Rory, you have to add hot water. <laughs> Is it swelling up like a potato tampon in his mouth? <laughs> Tiger Woods right. with, the, with the tree. Tiger Woods with the tree. <laughs> Tiger Woods with the tree in the library. <laughs> it's sporting Cluedo. <laughs> Tiger Woods with the tree, best with the fish, and the two boys. Yes, Captain. <laughs> yeah. Although the phraseology is poor, I'll give you three points. Yeah, well done. Yeah, in fact, Jonathan Woodgate wooed TV presenter Kate Lawler with the help of her fellow Big Brother contestant, Federico. Tiger Woods proposed to his girlfriend, Ellen, in the romantic surroundings of the Shamwari Game Reserve in South Africa. And legendary Lothario George Best tried to win back lover Gina De Vivo, not with flowers, but by leaving a symbolic circle of fish fillets around a rose bush in her garden. George Best was stopped for drink driving last week. The policeman who arrested him was rewarded with a place in the Guinness Book of Records for asking the world's most pointless question. Have you been drinking, George? <laughs> Tiger Woods is proud of his mixed heritage, which includes a quarter tie and an eighth black, which coincidentally can also be found hidden behind the socks in Phil's special drawer. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Phil's team have eight. Yes, come on. Time now for Phil the Sportsman. David and Rory, can you take your positions, please? If you put your blindfolds on when you get there, you'll get a suitable amount of time to try and work out who it is that stumbled between you. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Rory. Your time starts now. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I, I've come across a, a tiny wooden football team and I've knocked them over. <laughs> I've just walked through them like they were Man City's defence. <laughs> oh, and it's the beauty on steroids. <laughs> Hey, we've got some bare flesh here, mate. Have we? Where are we? <laughs> oh, <laughs> done your good God. <laughs> David, what have they done to your head? <laughs> nice, there. Uh, is it, are we talking bulls? Uh, talking, talking here we are, yeah. Um, it's uh, somebody's, but what's that? What was that you called? kicked over? I've no idea. It was sort of skittle type things. Let me have a little feel again. <laughs> oh, right, yes, skittle. You can go down there, we'll be all right, yeah. <laughs> you ever seen me juggle? Uh, watch <laughs> But I won't ask you. It, it must be a, 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 a lovely um, lady bowl, world bowling champion. At what level? World. Of course. Three times world champion, temping bowler Zara Glover. 
Okay, Jonathan and Phil, hope you go. Okay, blindfolds on. And can we have our second mystery guest, please? Start now. <laughs> oh. oh my God! Oh, oh. What's, what's, what's that? <laughs> so, oh, this is oh, wrong. A, this is just wrong. A, <laughs> Phil says, "What's oh, that? It's a training shoe." <laughs> it's a, this is like some sort of medical accident. Isn't it? <laughs> How's she doing this? Careful! <laughs> I'll tell you what though. Where is it? Recently waxed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's um it, uh, is it a limb world's worst with limbo dancer or something? <laughs> uh, is it well, a hurdler? <laughs> I tell you this leg and me, we're going places, aren't we? <laughs> is it is your leg? <laughs> well I don't know it is. Well, you, you just said it was half a body. <laughs> can, I a, can I have a swing? <laughs> It'd be fun for all of us. I've got one of these oh. I'll end it just a little swing. No! <laughs> just a little. Phil, you stand on me in case she falls. <laughs> it's a high jumper. Well done, come on, Phil. Oh, give me come five more minutes. <laughs> it's on. the world champion lady high jumper of the uh, world. British high jump champion yeah. Susan Jones and oh indeed British record holder. <laughs> The legs were very, very smooth indeed. Yes, as you mentioned several thousand times. <laughs> you shave yours, I understand you as well. I do in a compete, yes. Well, well, you say when you compete, but yeah. I think we what know really. What possible you know. benefit can waxing your legs give you when you'd want to go when you want to be a, a runner? Good point. The, for cycling, it makes it makes considerable difference because of the, the wind yeah, resistance. Yeah, but you're, you're a hurdler. <laughs> You've got me, you've got me there. <laughs> in that case, if you yeah. shaved your head, how much faster would you run? It, I did use some it shaved, yeah. It what about your shaving arms? your... I did that as well. But the only problem was with that, I took half my skin off my arm. You know what you could do for real speed? Oh, have your arms removed. Yeah, I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking that. Because then you'd be like a... And have your head pointed. Yeah, you'd be like thinking. a bloody bullet going but down. But the only trouble with that is... The only trouble with that is he does, oh. he does a 400 metre hurdle. If he goes down, he's not going to be able to get it up again. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to be... It's no, nothing to push this, up with. No, I need a couple of springs implanted there. Oh, Boy, no. <laughs> But people say we don't take the serious questions of sport seriously enough on this programme. So at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Phil's team have eleven. <laughs> We finish as ever with a name game, the team in the lead goes first, which is Phil's team. Close if Pass those along to Jonathan, please, Chris, thank this. you very much. Pay attention. The time, got Jonathan and the rest of the team, starts now. All right, remember the band with Morton Harkett who did Take On uh -huh. Me? Okay, if you put an S in front of the name. Saha. Uh -huh. uh, Louis Saha. There you go, well done. Uh, all right, hello, I came here in a basket, I'm just going to part a bit of a sea here. All right, fellas, Moses. come on into the desert, there you go. Ed and Moses. it's what common people call Ed this. Moses. Barney. Ed Moses, there you go. Oh, Ed Moses. Uh, um, <laughs> First name, first name is, uh, this fella's first name is the same as the second name of that in the jungle one. <laughs> this first name Andre. is the second name of that, that fool in the Andre jungle one. No, I'm going to thank you. Good uh, job, boy. Uh, don't swear. Uh, okay. All right, if you were out with um, uh, the bloke Merton from Have I Got News For You, yeah. and he got he was going to throw up, you'd say, no, don't. Sick up, throw up, chunder. Don't, don't chunder. Merton. No, sec first name. Chunder Paul. Don't chunder oh, Paul. Oh, sure, 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 s
this is a goalkeeper. Imagine the nicest buttocks in pop music. Not Peter Kylie, Kylie. 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 Okay. And the first name, James someone. He died too young. Oh, too young. He was taken from us tragically. James. James. The third. <laughs> He was the movie star, he died James in the 50s. James Dean, Dean, Dean Keeley. Keeley. All right, this Keeley. is a singer. Second name, we've always been told not to do this in the street. <laughs> Expect to it. Spit. Spit. And if you do it a lot, you would be. He's, he's doing, doing it more than once. He's doing it a hell of a lot. Yeah, no. <laughs> his name's not a hell of a lot of spit. It's uh, Spit. Something spit. Mark Spit. Mark Spit. Well, you're on fire tonight. Okay. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. Well done. Okay, so you moved on to 17. So, 9 will win it for oh, you. Right. Right, long for Rory, please. Has any, anybody ever got 9 to win it? Yeah. yeah. Not on this programme. No. <laughs> okay, time starts now. Uh, Stand up of the week, Moody ex Arsenal player, plays for Man City, got sent off. Nicholas and Nelson. Yeah. Um, Alex Ferguson's son. <laughs> Think of the Argonauts. Jason. Jason. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, very good. Uh, fat Belgian girl plays tennis, lost recently. King Clyde's <laughs> <laughs> Left the keeper, punched a fan at the weekend. Good it for him. Fantastic. Yeah. This is you know when you're smoking a spliff, John, and you burn those sticks. What are they called? Josh. Josh. And, Josh and the second name. Lose, oh, sorry. In the sky. Lucy. With, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a U.S. golfer. First name something the kid. Uh, Billy. Uh, Billy. 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 Yeah. Uh, okay. And it's, it's a magazine that Jonathan lent Mayfair. to me. Billy Billy Mayfair. Mayfair. Yeah. <laughs> this is a Colombian woman. Think of that war in South Africa. Michael Caine was in the film. Zulu. Zulu. And think of a posh person. Uh, Zulu Zulu Zulaga. 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 Yeah. Is she lost in the semi final. What's name? Fabiola. Fabiola. Oh, sorry, I thought you were asking yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Swansea goal scorer, if you were sort of amble along in a sort of, you know, Dixon's got the same, ex Arsenal. Kerry. 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 Lee. 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 Scored for Swansea in the FA Cup, a good player. If you walk in a sort of oh, uh, ambling, yeah. heavy, Tiger. sort of, yeah, leopard, just cheetah. Ambling slowly along in a, in a, in a sort of stroller, manner, stroller, in a, casual, in a sort of trains, trains do it. Trains, tra and go along Chuff. in a trundly sort of manner. Puff. <laughs> Not having that. He's a Yeovil striker. Oh, no. Okay, so David's team has 16, but this week's winners is Phil's team at 17. John, Phil, Jonathan and Chris. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Well, don't miss Jim Davidson's commercial breakdown at 10.35. That's after the 10 o'clock news next on BBC One, reporting on the Morecambe Bay tragedy. And then Newsnight follows on BBC Two at 10.30.